Hi, this is Adnan Bhartia and welcome to TFR Insight and let's introduce our guest today, it's Rob Hirschfeld from Racken. Rob, uh, welcome to our show once again. Swap, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And today we are going to talk about edge computing and your edge lab. Uh, before we get into that, I just we have spoken about this earlier, but I just want to reiterate, how would you define edge computing? What is it? Just tell about it. <laughs> <laughs> edge, edge computing is like cloud. Everybody sort of has their own definitions of it. Um, for me, it's when you're putting com compute on in situ. So on premises, it could be you know in a telephone pole, in a car, in an intersection, in a store. It really just means that it's, you know, in some ways it's classic IT. I'm doing, you know, computing work at the place where I need to do the work instead of a remote location like the cloud. What are the constraints? What are the flexibilities? What what are the kind of advantages? So at one end, you get a lot of extra advantages that you won't get in the typical data center. At the same time, you have some limitations. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, that's a really important consideration. I, that's my other definition for edge. It's computing with, with constraints. Um, and so typically when we look at edge infrastructure, we're dealing with something that's very um, limited from a compute capability or a, a latency perspective or a bandwidth perspective. And one of the hallmarks of edge is that we generate a lot of data, a lot of information that we want to act on, but we don't have the ability to send that out to another site for computation or processing. So uh, everybody's favorite example seems to be the idea that you're doing uh, analysis of jet engines in flight. You don't send all that data off the airplane. You do the work right there. You land, you upload the data, even that upload is, is an enormous amount of data. So people look for ways to prune that back. Um, and so, you know, a lot of what we're trying to do is make decisions very close to where the data is being collected and where the decision actually is going to be impacted. So flying a drone, driving a car, but even voice analysis and video analysis, all of these things um, running out of factory require you to make very fast decisions on the data that you have present and not send them out to the cloud. In general, it looks like you no know, edge and data centers are two different things. But uh, so I'm curious that is it possible, though, first of all, uh, impossible is not a word to be found in the dictionary of ID, <laughs> but there can be edge data centers. The emerging trend for edge data centers today, we sort of have you know clusters in closets, which people don't think of as data centers. And then we also have a lot of very smart IoT devices, and the devices themselves are getting smarter and smarter, right? There's, you know, people's phones nowadays have more computing processor capability than data centers 20 years ago had. Um, even so, what the trend line shows is that we're moving to multi-system environments, and that's really the distinction. Uh, just a couple years ago, an edge si system was a whole bunch of devices and a gateway that sort of coordinated that activity and provided patches and things like that. What, what we're seeing is edge infrastructure, where I might have a multi-machine environment, a multi-node environment, what some people would call a data center, um, and all of these devices. And that combination is what's actually making edge much more complex than uh, it has been in the past. What are the things that actually makes it more complex or harder than, you know, what typical uh, cloud. Yeah, there's a couple of things. One of them is um, you, you don't want to have people in those environments. And so you're in a situation where if you're in a cell phone tower or a store or on a ship um, or on a, it, you know, in, in an airplane, you don't have IT people available to make changes and fixes. So things have to be incredibly autonomous and very simple. At the same time, we have a problem where they also are uh, uh, very cost sensitive. If you're building thousands of systems, you're you're not going to buy ten thousand dollar servers. You want to buy two hundred dollar, a thousand dollar servers, um, and you also have a lot more supply chain variation. So, in those cases, we have no people to administer. We have inexpensive gear, and then we have a lot of different vendors and capabilities and footprints and and just formats for this this infrastructure. And so. What we've got is, in some ways, the hardest IT environment imaginable, right? You can't touch it. You got to control the costs. And it's incredibly diverse, complex, and heterogeneous. So that makes Edge a headache. Yes, it is headache. It's hard. It's complex. 
what are you, by you I mean Racken, doing uh, to kind of, you know, simplify that and bring Edge even to your workshop or your garage or your, you know, offices? Right now everybody's working remotely, so you sh it's much better to have it. I, you, you know, it's, it, but you also can't procure gear, so we, we sort of have this, this split challenge. Um, hopefully people will think this through and be ready for the next time, and, and we will have more Edge infrastructure built out so people can take advantage of it. Uh, so what Racken does at a, at a high level is we automate the physical layer of data center infrastructure. And, but when we say data center, it's really any infrastructure. It's any multi-machine environment. And so for us, the edge is really just another set of physical infrastructure. In a lot of ways, Racken's focus on multi-vendor heterogeneous brownfield control systems and full life cycle is exactly the match for what we've been describing. We don't care what operating system, we don't care what hardware vendor, we don't care what architecture chip you put on it. Uh, you know, all those things are, are basically absorbed into the Racken digital rebar platform. And that means that you can mix and match hardware, you can take different styles of infrastructure and still have a consistent automation experience. And that to us is what Edge has been missing. Edge needs that sort of underlay so that then you can put on Kubernetes or VMware or KVM or just run your apps directly on the, the machines. If you can provide a consistent API driven way to run that hardware, then you don't have to send people out there. You can manage thousands of sites in a consistent way. And that really ends up being the, the key to unlocking you know, a lot more edge innovation. So is that all this work that you're doing in this space, is that what culminates into what you call Edge Lab? Edge Lab.digital is a reference architecture that um, we have as, a, as an open source design, and it's, it's intended to be vendor friendly because we're talking about bringing vendors into these spaces, different hardware vendors, different operating systems, different platforms, but doing it in a way that somebody can buy gear. Um, and in this case, I'll actually show you, right? We, this is my, my power over ethernet Raspberry Pi Edge Lab, completely self-contained, zero touch automation. I plug in, plug in the ethernet and I, I get a cluster at the end of it. Um, very simple, under four hundred dollar infrastructure. Might not be what you want to put in all of your your edge locations. You might want to put more vendor specific gear. But the idea here is that you can start from something as simple as that four hundred dollar Raspberry Pi lab, build automation, and then have that automation work in you know regular ARM, AMD, um, you know standard standard infrastructure in the cloud even. So the idea with Edge Lab is that what we really want to do is start to normalize all of this infrastructure so people can create a repeatable experience regardless of what hardware infrastructure they put in place. Whether that's you know, starting with these pies, any work we do on the pies, actually we can immediately take our, our K3S, so it's our, our Kubernetes on that in that uh, environment is a, is a Rancher K3S, it's a lightweight Kubernetes and that, you can literally take that and install it on any infrastructure, even in thousands of machines in your data center, because the way we've done infrastructure as code in this environment is portable. So what, what Racken has done for Edge Lab is we've defined the reference architecture. We're, we're, we're defining new bill of materials that people can just order and play with. And then you take digital rebar, you turn it on, and it will build out that environment regardless of what the underlying infrastructure hardware is. And then... We can collaborate with vendors above in the infrastructure, the ranchers, uh, Kubernetes communities, OpenFast, um, really anything that you wanted to bring in and add it on top of that environment in a consistent, repeatable way. Because what, what we found, Swap, is that everybody's building their own sort of edge infrastructure lab in this haphazard way. And it's, you know, it's a crapshoot whether or not you're going to be able to repeat somebody else's instructions and get a consistent, repeatable result out. And if we can't do that on your desk, there's no way we're going to be able to do it when we replicate it to thousands of edge sites. So the hardware that you have picked is like kind of commodity hardware. You you showed us, and I do know about some of the core components. Can you talk about what are the core components of this uh, Edge Lab, uh, the hardware piece? Yeah, so Edge Lab is super simple. It's just four Raspberry Pi, four Bs. It could be Nooks. It could be... Uh, Dell, Lenovo, HP, Supermicro all have their own edge servers. We already support those in Digital Rebar, so those are just plug in, drop and plug in and play. Um, and then for the, the Raspberry Pis in this case, we added the power over Ethernet cards, um, which allows them to be powered by a power over Ethernet switch. So literally, we're able to just take those, those units, uh, plug them into the switch, and they boot up and install. 
Um, and, and we take advantage of the fact that those uh, Raspberry Pis also have Wi-Fi. So the first one on the network acts as a gateway, and that is what connects you to the internet. So the, the system itself is completely self-contained. Uh, all of the Pixie Boot automation, all that stuff runs on the switch, and so it doesn't bleed into your home network or corporate network at all. Um, it's very, very carefully designed to be this sort of standalone edge compute environment, simulate real edge uh, environments. The reference design that you showed you, you're using Raspberry Pi, because Raspberry Pi is also very, very inexpensive as compared to Nox. I mean, you can get like, I, I think at least 10 or 20 Pies for one Nox. And this was a, de a debate on the team, right? When, when Racken looks at this type of solution, we're like, that is not data center hardware. And we don't think that you should be using that as your IT platform in the field. But people are. And so, you know, it is reasonable to say you're not going to deploy data center class gear in the in the field. You're going to you're going to get either field ready gear, which is like in specialized enclosures and hardened for the field. Uh, and those have their own management challenges. Or you're going to buy super cheap gear that you can dispose of. And so the idea would be even with a Nook and to give you a sense a, a a Nook with some out-of-band management and Pixie Boot capabilities and things like that costs one Nook costs more than that whole Pi cluster I just showed you. Um, still super cheap compared to an enterprise class data center server, but uh, you know what we're trying to do is get to a point where it's disposable because the the idea here would be I'm in a you know location a UPS driver or a FedEx driver should be able to show up you know, remove the, the device with the red blinking light, put in, you know, unbox, put in the device with, you know, that they're in the box, plug it in, put the bad device back in the box and ship it home. And that's it. That should be what IT looks like in these environments. Um, and th part of that is making IT and the utility in the box completely automated and simple, which is a hard problem. And the fact that these devices are so inexpensive that you're just shipping them out into those environments. Um, and ideally, letting you have some redundancy. So, you know, I could easily see somebody saying, you know what, the Raspberry Pis are, in a, you know, are not as durable, but I could buy 10 times as many and create a much bigger cluster with redundancy than, you know, almost any other server out there. So we expect to see them co come into the fold. One challenge with Raspberry Pis that people should be aware of is they are ARM processors. Um, and you know that means that they, they don't just take all of the normal things you would see in cloud or traditional processors, Intel-based or AMD-based processors, straight out of the box. And they do require a little bit more care and feeding from that perspective. And that's just part of, of how things go. Uh, ARM is becoming much more accessible. It's available in, in uh, cloud as a, as a cloud instance now. And so you could actually run uh, cloud workloads for tests. We highly recommend that. Everything we do, we test in cloud infrastructure also, uh, because frankly, that's a great way to test it. It's the idea that you have on-premises or cloud doesn't make any sense to us. Uh, just like edge or cloud doesn't make any sense to us, it's all and. You're going to be running edge and uh, cloud, you're going to be running on premises and cloud. Um, it's it's really, you know, we want a uniform compute experience for people. So coming back to Edge Labs, can people build them themselves, or do you offer reference design, or do you offer full fledged hardware? How, how how do people get those? Yeah, it's entirely designed as a self service uh, at home uh, model. So. We have a, at edgelab.digital, there is a bill of materials with links to Amazon for ordering. Of course, you can get the materials anywhere. Um, but you can literally just order the gear that you want uh, and, you know, burn a couple of SD cards, plug them in and go. Uh, it, you know, we, we put our CFO through this and uh, she was able to get the whole infrastructure built and running inside of a 30 minute time period. So this is designed, you know, we really do mean it as a lab. So. You, know, you could put a, a, a high school student in this, a college student in this. Uh, if you're you know, just looking to play with Kubernetes, this is a super easy way to download and try you know, and spend 30 minutes building the cluster and you're done. Um, very, very powerful, simple software. And then amazingly, this is exactly the same software that RackN is powering multinational banks with. So this isn't this isn't you know toy automation. It's real automation that works on this incredibly diverse spectrum of of infrastructure, and that's a key to us for cloud and edge. 
you shouldn't be, you know, doing something that's different for to make these Raspberry Pis work. And we don't. This is exactly the same software that we use in every other data center that that we power. What role is Racken playing, or you know, Digital Bar playing in this, you know, Edge uh, lab? We are sort of the connective tissue in some ways. Um, you could think of Digital Rebar as an, an automation hub for the physical layer of your data center. And so Digital Rebar provides the Pixie boot operating system install, uh, the coordination to actually build the platform and get your SSH keys built, um, all of the connective pieces. Um, in larger data centers, that means we also integrate into systems of record, um, you know, authentication systems, DNS infrastructures, networking topology, building switches and, and automating the switch and network fabric. So it really does become this sort of glue that brings all these different pieces together. Uh, Digital Rebar has an open ecosystem, so that all of those pieces that I'm describing are actually part of the Digital Rebar ecosystem where you can add in a new component. Um, you don't have to make it open source. We have people uh, and vendors who add in their own capabilities, uh, keep them to themselves and make them available you know, through their own process, or they can just contribute it back into the digital rebar ecosystem and, and add. So like all of the K3S and Kubernetes components are just open resources. And uh, for Edge Lab, they get downloaded automatically and are part of the environment uh, just out of the box. If you then want to add in other things, you can click some buttons and pull in from our catalog. It's really that simple. Yeah, now I'm going to build one for myself. And <laughs> uh, thank you once again, Rob, uh, for talking about Edge Labs. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the conversation.